and what is the significance of Zulkarnain, who was the jailer and who imprisoned Yajuj and Majuj in somewhat of a natural prison, you cannot understand his achievement unless you figure out and understand who Yajuj and Majuj exactly are. Yajuj and Majuj have been men mentioned in all divine books that came before. You open up the Old Testament or the New Testament, you will find them mentioning and speaking of Gog and Magog. Either Jesus speaking about it or the disciples speaking about it, but Gog and Magog will be there. They are inside the Torah also, even though the Torah upon Musa wasalam, came down so many centuries ago. And inside our Quran, Yajuj and Majuj appears directly at least three times in direct mention, maybe another two or three mentions which are debatable, but no doubt they are definitely mentioned directly. In one place Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفُتِحَتْ يَاجُوجُ وَمَاجُوجُ Then Yajuj and Majuj will be opened up as one of the signs of Qiyamah. وَهُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ حَدَفِي يَنْسِلُونَ And from every office, from every corner, from every hole, from every, you know, a ditch, these people will be coming out and they will be consuming the earth and they will be running havoc on the surface of the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this inside the book of Allah regarding one of the signs of Qiyamah. Regarding their relationship to Dhul Qarnayn, this Yajuj and Majuj were imprisoned by them, or by him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that amongst the signs of Qiyamah, that when Isa alayhi salatu was salam, the Prophet of Allah referred to as Jesus, when he comes down on the eastern minara of the Umayyad Masjid of Damascus, comes down on the two wings of an angel, of, of angels, and when he faces the Antichrist Dajjal and pursues him, he will slay much of the army of the Antichrist and he will finally succeed in chopping off the head of Dajjal, the Antichrist. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so specific that he mentioned that he will kill him in a place called Lud, which is in today Palestine. Lud is a suburb just outside present-day Tel Aviv. There was no Lud at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was saying this. It was all Kanaan. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not speak of and neither did the people even know of any <coughs> suburb by the name of Lud. It's a modern suburb that's there. Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned that his head will roll in a, in a, in a well called the Bir Zaybak, the well of Zaybak, which is a national monument and is preserved between two highways. Anybody been to Quds recently? Anybody traveled all the way to the airport in the 1947 occupied area? and been to Ben Gurion Airport is right there, right there by Lut. And if anybody has got relatives who are living there, it's normally particular tribes that live in, in Lut area. They're not, you know, uh, ancient Arab tribes that live in that area. That highway of Berezebak, or that, that highway of Lut runs right there, and the well wherein his head is going to roll is preserved as a national monument right in the middle of a main road. And I was there a few years back. Why is it preserved? That's because people sometimes look after the old bullet that blows off their own head. People <laughs> preserve the old book that gives them the old lash. Who's preserving it? It's a Yahud that's preserving it. The Jal will be running an army off these people. And they are preserving the beer is Ibaq. Why? وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plan and Allah plans and Allah is the best of plans. They preserve, they even have so much yaqeen that that same gharqa tree that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that as a sign, if I may, this, this is away from Zulqarnayn by the way, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that when, when, that tree will be planted. That tree will be planted, the tree of Gharqat. Whoever, whenever, when it's the time of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, anybody opposing him, any Yahudi opposing him, 
will go inside that tree and every shajar and every hajar, every tree and every stone will say that, O oh Muslim, khalfi Yahudi, that behind me is an enemy of yours, come and get him. Illa al-gharqad, except the gharqad tree, fa innahu shajaratul yahud, for it is the tree belonging to those guys. It is a tree belonging to them. And they have got so much yaqeen and conviction in what Rasulullah is saying, that there are national movements to plant that tree in as much as possible. Why? Wa makaru wa makar Allah. Allah plans and they plan and Allah is the best of planners. And they have got no reason. They have got to, why are we preserving the well? Why are we preserving this tree? Of course, the tree, they've got a reason to preserve this tree, but in particular, it'll save them. It'll hopefully save them temporarily. Nobody's going to stay in a tree forever. But uh, nobody's going to stay in a tree forever unless you're an ape. Uh, but regarding the well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Anyway, coming back to our incident of Zul Qarnayn. When Isa alayhi salatu wasalam slays him, he will be informed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell him, إِنِّي قَدْ أَخْرَجْتُ عِبَادًا لِي لَا يَدَانْ لِأَحَدٍ That I have caused certain servants of mine to come out of their lair, to come out of their den. Nobody can fight with, with them. Referring to Yajuj and Majuj. فَأْخُذْ So take the believers on the top of Mount Tur. Isa alayhi will take the believers at that time to the mountain top of Mount Tur wherein the only subsistence of them will be the vicar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their subhanallah, their alhamdulillah, will be a source of subsistence for their bellies. Hatta until one of them or the community will, pre will prefer a head of an ox more than its weight in gold, referring to the need of the people at that particular point in time. This Yajuj and Majuj, by the way, will run a havoc on the earth. They will eat up all the resources of the earth. They will come to the lake Tiberius or Bahru Tabariya, and they will drink up that entire water until the last portion of that army of Yajuj and Majuj. When they come to that lake, they will say that as if one day, once upon a time, there was water inside this lake, not realizing that their own army, who could have passed a few hours ago, drank up that entire well, and this, and this will be the ravacious or ravenous appetite of that Yajuj and Majuj. When they are at their heights, they will claim and they will say that Qatalna man fil ard, we have killed who's ever inside the earth. Let us kill the one that's in the sky. And they will take an arrow and shoot it up. It will return back with blood. And they will claim that we have killed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hayy al qayyum that blood was probably a crow or a bird or Superman. They got his tie. You know what I mean? Superman. What's his name? Clark Kent. They got his tie. That arrow was made of kryptonite. They got him and it came back to earth. It came back full of blood. That's what it was. Of course, nobody can hit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's impossible. Whilst they're at their position, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, will make dua. That, oh Allah, assist us. We can't live on the top of mountains forever. A, a disease will infect the necks of Yajuj and Majuj. They will die the death of a single person. When Isa alayhi salatu wa salam comes down to the earth, and he will see the bodies of these people polluting the earth, what will happen is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send down birds who are in the shape of cranes, to pick up the bodies of this Yajuj and Majuj, dump them inside the sea. It will rain for a period of 40 days, and the earth will bring back its produce like it never ever brought before. Now this Yajuj and Majuj, they are imprisoned right now. But who imprisoned them? Dhul Karnayn. And how did he imprison them? Well, when he came to those people, they said, Ya Dhul Karnayn, O Dhul Karnayn. إِنَّ يَأْجُوجَ وَمَأْجُوجَ مُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْعَرْضِ That they have caused corruption in the earth. فَحَلْ هَلْ نَجْعَلُ لَكَ خَرَجًا Then can we give you some payment, O Dhul Qarnayn, that you build a wall or a barrier between us and between them. They recognize Dhul Qarnayn to be a wealthy man full of resources. Therefore they request him that what you do is that 
build a wall between us and them so they can no longer raid our villages anymore. Dhul Qarnayn tells them that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me is sufficient. I don't need any payment from you people. However, he acknowledges that your thought was good, which is an indication that you request anybody to do a service for you, don't be a freeloader and expect even the king to do favors for you for free. But rather understand that you need to offer them something and you need to inform them that what is your payment and we will take care of it. If that person responds with ihsan and kindness, well that is a good thing. Dhul Qarnayn builds that wall in a very model way. A construction which at that time was completely unknown. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, his response, مَا مَكَّنِّي فِيهِ رَبِّي خَيْرٍ Whatever power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me is better. فَعِينُونِ بِقُوَّةٍ But he tells the villagers, I need you people to assist me with strength and with your, with your manpower. So anyway, so that I may make that wall. آتُونِي زُبَرَ الْحَدِيمِ Bring for me blocks of iron. Hatta ida sawa bain al-sadafain. What he did is that that mountain range which occupied or was the valley on the other side of the mountain, Dhul Qarnayn, then a deserted valley, Dhul Qarnayn with the believers or with, the, with those people at that time and his army. In the middle, a valley uninhabited. And on the other side of that valley, Yajuj and Majuj. So this was his intent that I am going to make this entire valley into one huge wall that they will never be able to climb and they will never be able to drill or penetrate through. He fills that entire valley up with iron and he tells them, Unfuhu, blow, referring to lighting that entire valley until all those pieces of iron melted and smelted and became one big block of iron from one end of the valley right till the other end of the valley. Then he says, Hatta ida ja'alahu nara. He made the entire thing into fire. Qala, he says, Atuni ufriq alayhi qipra. I will pour upon this entire contraption copper. And he poured copper upon that entire thing whilst the thing was still lit and still, you know, hot until it dried up. It now became solid. And then he says, that this Yajuj and Majuj cannot climb over it, neither can they drill through it. When he completed that construction, he told the people that this is mercy from my Lord, which gives us another indication. A Muslim builder, a Muslim scientist, a Muslim king does not attribute any feat to himself, but says that this is Rahmah from my Rabb. That whatever I'm doing, it's from my Rabb. He uses his achievements as a source and a means of da'wah, calling people towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what a great achievement for his time. The people are of course amazed, astonished that he actually did this for them, free of charge. But he concludes that entire, you know, that entire construction by saying, that that this is mercy from my Lord. And then he reminds them, that when the promise of my Lord comes, this place will be completely down. It will be completely flat. Either referring to Qiyamah or referring to the day when Yajuj and Majuj will finally bust through this place and they will come to terrorize the inhabitants of the earth. Referring to that major sign of Qiyamah, وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّ حَقَّ And the promise of my Rabb is true. The promise of my Rabb will never ever be false. And it will never ever come to no end. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even mentioned that a hole from amongst the wall of holding back the Yajuj and Majuj has been broken today. And it will continue to remain at the sides until the day will come that they will break through. In one narration, Rasulullah tells us that every day Yajuj and Majuj attempt to break through their wall. But they are unsuccessful. 
one day they will say insha'Allah which indicates that even Yajuj and Majuj believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some way. Yajuj and Majuj may have Muslims amongst them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The majority of 